At the Flying J in Denver, Indiana Jack prepares Old Red for a trip to Montana to pick up a load of sugar going to a cookie factory in South Carolina. At an elevation of over 5,000 feet, Denver can be pretty cold, even into late May. But with the snow melted and Mother Nature cooperating, the trip should be routine. Well, they just loaded my sugar up, up here in uh, Montana, way up on the border of Canada, up here in Sydney, uh, Montana. So we're gonna get going. We're at a sugar plant. They take beets out of the fields up here in Montana, and they, uh, turn the beets into sugar here and the load I'm hauling now is going to a cookie factory in South Carolina so it's gonna be a nice load we'll try to get all the highlights of the trip what's gonna make it interesting is up here all the fracking is going on. If you saw my recent film, The Fracking Sand, it's going on a lot of places in the country, but here in Texas especially, I don't know if that guy was trying to hurry up or slow down, but oh well. He wanted to stop there, but if drivers would indicate what they want to do, we would interact with them, but when we don't know what they want to do, we just keep doing what we're doing. So the fracking sand and the sugar don't have anything to do with each other, it just up, up here is where all the, you'll see all the oil trucks and all the uh, hustling and bustling is going on with all the fracking. So that's cool. We need business in America. Now we're going to weigh. And from what I hear, this nice lady here, she does our axles for us. And that'll save me $10. We'll do the first axles. And let's. There we go. See, she's flashing us. Not the good kind of flashing, just the flashing of her lights. <laughs> I've got my rear axles up too far, but we'll deal with that later. We're in Alexander, North Dakota. Home of all these fracking trucks I was talking about. And it's like this whole region, they're rebuilding everything. And this is one of the only things they have completed, and it's a travel plaza. It's actually very nice. Um, other than all the trucks that are here, it's a pretty nice place. 
I'm joking about that. I always make fun of how dirty all these oil trucks are. Well, do I want to back in? Yeah, I think I will. No, maybe not. He's oversized. So he's sticking way out. new place they got here. good money I mean hundred thousand dollars that's pretty good money but it's not easy work so you got to work The stillness of the morning has a calming effect and is almost like being in a jet at 43,000 feet. Well, we're in Dickinson, North Dakota. the good old-fashioned uh, Tiger Truck Stop. Not to be confused with the Tiger Truck Stop in Louisiana. That one has a real tiger. This one just has a big one on the wall. And the car wash. gotta say about North Dakota they pretty much keep the chains out the chain truck stops I don't think there's a TA or a Petro or a pilot or a flying J I know when Fargo there is but talking about out here in the boonies.
it's on my tail Rolling down the road There's a train on the rail While cruising at 64 miles per hour on 94, a bear comes up beside the rolling semi and slows down, almost as if to take a look. Many states inspect trucks without even stopping the truck using what's known as RF. This gives the officer a look inside the workings of the truck at a glance. Oh, we got some bobtails. Filling up the spaces. All right, looks like they're full. Oh my gosh, there's a little tiny truck way back in there. That guy should be shot. <laughs> So that's full. Now we gotta go to McDonald's. I've actually parked here a few times. I'm sure McDonald's doesn't like us taking up all their parking, but. like they have a few places. Thank goodness. See, that guy was right behind me. All right. Here in St. Cloud. We're here in Menominee, Wisconsin. Just stopping for some coffee and stretching the feet, kind of doing a walk around of the truck on our trip to South Carolina from Montana. So let's get rolling again. This is actually, a, it's not big in size, but this truck stop here in Menominee, Wisconsin is kind of important because there's a Walmart distribution center right, right there. And wherever there's a Walmart distribution center, there's always a lot of trucks. So, there's actually two truck stops here at this exit in Menominee. big company down further and I, I've been there but it's been like five years and I can't remember what it is. I have friends that are reefer drivers and they're always in Wisconsin. of all the dairy stuff here. Milk, cheese, yogurt, everything like that.
the Wisconsin Dells, and, which is actually one of the most scenic areas in the whole United States. So I know a lot of people watch me from other countries and they visit the U.S. You may want to, next time you come visit the U.S., go to come to Wisconsin and see the Wisconsin Dells in the summer. <laughs> Don't come in the winter. There might be skiing there, I don't know, but I doubt that it's famous for its skiing. Definitely, though, in the summer, it's worth spending a few days with your family and if you like water and lakes and stuff. So that's coming up here shortly as we tour through Wisconsin. The Wisconsin Dells are known as the Playland of the Midwest. It's a city in South Central Wisconsin with a population of 2,678 people. The city takes its name from the Dells of Wisconsin River, a scenic, glacially formed gorge that features striking sandstone formations along the banks of the Wisconsin River. Together with the nearby village of Lake Delton, the city forms an area known as the Dells and is a popular Midwestern tourist destination. You may want to call ahead for truck parking. One thing I really like about Chicago, which I wish some of the other cities would do, is they have if you're on the toll road anyway, you have service plazas to go to, to to stop at. And we need to take that 30 minute break. <laughs> huh, this one doesn't have the... Uh, Starbucks logo. Oh no! Yeah, it does. It just has the little sign, not the big sign. And these are great as long as there's a parking place. You got JB Hunt there taking up the whole spot. Or a bobtail. Woohoo! We got one. We're lucky. You ought to see these at lunch. <laughs> you got trucks. Because not only do you have the uh, us OTR drivers, but you have the local guys. So everybody's competing for a place to stop for lunch. When I was a kid, these plazas were Howard Johnson's, and then uh, 
Howard Johnson's pretty much went out of the restaurant business and now they're just fast food places. And that's better because it's, you know, we're in and out, it's fast. So it's a much better setup they have here now. Well, our coffee breaks over here in Chicago. Actually, we're taking it with us. And we just have, uh, about another hour to go. And we'll be stopping for the night. Way between Chicago and Indianapolis. Pilot showers in this case, it's almost brand new. Everything looks spectacular, it's clean. Uh, cleaner than my shower at home. Shh. The reason I pulled into Petro is I realized I didn't have any showers there. So I came over to Pilot where I had showers. I doubt you were wondering about that, but if you were, that's the reason, that's the reason. The next morning, the traveling sugar truck snakes its way over the Ohio River and through Louisville, Kentucky, nearing its final destination of Columbia, South Carolina. The trip is smooth sailing. turn and 
to our delivery here. To the cookie company. Maybe they get free samples. Just what I need, more cookies. <laughs> you know, I think everybody likes cookies. I, I've never met anybody that doesn't like a cookie. So, it's, it's basically because they taste so good. You know, we never know what we're going to see or experience once we get to a delivery. Unless it's something common like a Walmart where, you know, it's just a simple drop and hook. But at a place like this, you just never know what, what we're going to experience. This is an odd turn for a truck. Approaching destination at 800 feet on the left side. It's way out in the boonies. We're in... Uh, Columbia, South Carolina. And uh, you're experiencing this the first time as well as, as, as myself. We're experiencing this together. All right. Receiving. I am early, so. That's one reason I don't know what's going to happen. Well, the, the gate's open, no? Huh. You never know if you're going to get lucky. Let's just be bold and go looking around what it is they're probably open but not receiving. I would venture to say that was it. Well I have some good news they gave us a door so we're going to be delivering this morning and getting this sugar off of our truck finally after what three or four days of uh, traveling all the way across the country from Montana all the way to South Carolina here on the East Coast hey you know what thanks for traveling along with me I'm Indiana Jack and remember trucking really is an adventure the cookie company is happy to receive their sugar and are actually waiting for it now the cookie company can continue baking those little sweet pastries. You know, most people don't ever think that they wouldn't be eating a cookie if a truck hadn't brought the ingredients to the factory. And in some cases, all the way from Montana. <laughs> Alexander, North Dakota. The stillness of the morning has a calming effect. 
and is almost like being in a jet at 43,000 feet. Well, we're in Dickinson, North Dakota. the good old-fashioned uh, Tiger Truck Stop. Not to be confused with the Tiger Truck Stop in Louisiana. That one has a real tiger. This one just has a big one on the wall. And the car wash. to say about North Dakota, they pretty much keep the chains out, the chain truck stops. I don't think there's a TA or a Petro. Or a Pilot or a Flying J. I know in Fargo there is, but well, do I want to back in? <laughs> yeah, I think I will. No, maybe not. He's oversized. So he's sticking way out. new place they got here. say good money, I mean $100,000, that's pretty good money. But it's not easy work, so you gotta work. At the Flying J in Denver, Indiana Jack prepares Old Red for a trip to Montana to pick up a load of sugar going to a cookie factory in South Carolina. At an elevation of over 5,000 feet, Denver can be pretty cold, even into late May. But with the snow melted and Mother Nature cooperating, the trip should be routine. Well, they just loaded my sugar up, up here in uh, Montana, way up on the border of Canada, up here in Sydney, uh, Montana. So we're gonna get going. We're at a sugar plant. They take beets out of the fields up here in Montana, and they, uh, turn the beets into sugar here and the load I'm hauling now is going to a cookie factory in South Carolina 
So it's going to be a nice load. We'll try to get all the highlights of the trip. What's going to make it interesting is up here all the fracking is going on. If you saw my recent film, The Fracking Sand, it's going on a lot of places in the country, but here in Texas especially, I don't know if that guy was trying to hurry up or slow down, but oh well. He wanted to stop there, but if drivers would indicate what they want to do, we would interact with them, but when we don't know what they want to do, we just keep doing what we're doing. So the fracking sand and the sugar don't have anything to do with each other, it just up, up here is where all the, you'll see all the oil trucks and all the uh, hustling and bustling is going on with all the fracking. So that's cool. We need business in America. Now we're going to weigh. And from what I hear, this nice lady here, she does our axles for us. And that'll save me $10. We'll do the first axles. And let's. There we go. See, she's flashing us. Not the good kind of flashing, just the flashing of her lights. <laughs> I've got my rear axles up too far, but we'll deal with that later. We're in Alexander, North Dakota. Home of all these fracking trucks I was talking about. And it's like this whole region, they're rebuilding everything. And this is one of the only things they have completed, and it's a travel plaza. It's actually very nice. Um, other than all the trucks that are here, it's a pretty nice place. I'm joking about that. I always make fun of how dirty all these oil trucks are. 